and welcome to another episode of Invisible Walls. And this is a special episode. This is the PlayStation 4 launch. I'm Ryan Stevens. I'm joined by Ben, young Benjamin Moore. I have to always <laughs> say young from now on. Uh, Daniel Bloodworth and Justin Spear. Uh, Marcus is out this week. He should be back when we do this next week for the Xbox One. Um, so at this point, all of our the big reviews for like you know the exclusive games have gone up for the most part. Um, I know we haven't. We dabbled a little bit with things like uh, sound shapes and flower. Yeah. It's I don't know. I know, Blood, you think it looks a little bit better. But yeah. I, I think I'd be hard pressed. Maybe if we got like them both plugged in and like switched the inputs, maybe you could, you could people, convince people me. People claim that the DualShock is more responsive on Flower 2, which I, I don't know. I'd ha I guess I'd have to go back and compare. Um, but so again, like I don't want to do a normal. We're doing a, there's a by the time this is up, I think we've already had like a 19 hour live stream or something like that. But I don't want to completely rehash the reviews that we've already done. Um, but you know, it's new hardware. We finally got to mess around with a lot of this stuff. Daniel, you've been messing around with the uh, kind of the video uploading stuff. Yeah, I've been pushing the share button a lot. Yeah, which is because if you want to guys go look up the whole HDCP controversy, you can you can get into that. But we've been experimenting <laughs> with some of that stuff. Um, as well, and you've had some issues, right? You're just saying like it was recorded the wrong clip or something. I've like only that? had it happen once, but I felt like, yeah, I, if I if I hadn't used it for a long time, then I went to upload a clip, and the clip I got was like from like an hour ago, rather than my most recent 15 minutes. Uh, so I didn't actually get the clip that I wanted. Uh, but I only had it happen once, so I guess we'll see how it goes. See how frequent that happens. Yeah, and there is definitely some kind of. I don't want to say missing functionality, but some stuff maybe we were we were like some people thought the HDCP thing would be off by this point. Uh, they've promised that you'll be able to, you can't get the movies on USB sticks. This is a big deal for us. I don't know about for you guys. Yeah, but, this is kind of um, that special specialized. But you know, like there's some stuff we were expecting. There was another thing. I tried the the Pulse Elite uh, headsets that Sony's been putting in with GTA and all this stuff, and it said it was an unsupported device. Is I it Bluetooth? Uh, well, it's a, it's a USB stick that you put oh. in, and then it sends out a 7.1 wireless to the okay. headset. And, no, no and it also serves as a chat headset. Um, well, let's talk about like again the hardware and stuff. Uh, Justin, controller. Are you are oh, you yeah. on, the, are you on the, really the, the fan side of the controller? Yeah, I think the maybe the general consensus is that the the sticks have the best resistance. I think of uh, any controller I've used for a long time. I think they're actually maybe even better than the the 360. Controller, which has really you know nice firm sticks, you can you get a nice. It just feels good, you know. I uh, I, the, I was the, surprised. I, I like I really I'm very I don't know if it's just how I was brought up, but I always liked asymmetric. I was never a fan of the original Dual Shock, and I think right. that kind of legacy because that thing hasn't really evolved in its yeah. physical form. Yeah, I, I still feel like my thumb is a little awkward over that far, but yeah, I, I like the I like the offset. I like the offset of the Xbox controllers. But as far as how the stick is tuned. It's and resistance. Nice. It just feels really good. I it think really the trigger is. tuning is really good on yeah, it. Yeah, that all the buttons feel good. I think it's. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I can say from the the kill zone multiplayer where there's like you know there's no aim assist or anything like that. Like you can be very exact when you want to be, or you feel like it's you making the mistake, like you know trying to compensate with the recoil and everything, and uh, it worked because that could that could have been a disaster if the controller was too chalky or something like that. So I, I mean, hats off to them. Uh, some of the gimmicky stuff. I don't know if knack. Ran into any of this stuff? I didn't see too much, but did like the touch, the swipe pad, and like the LED lights. I feel like the LED lights are going to be in everything. Yeah. Um, I got to see the, the new Thief game on the PS4, and it's like that will that will mirror your light and dark gem. You know, that's on already on screen. Okay. So it seems a little redundant. Yeah, when you're in Need for Speed, it'll be blue if you're a cop and red if you're a racer. And I saw another game, and they said like, you know, oh, uh, I think for was it Metal Gear? They said like if you choose like the flashlight. The light will become like a white light. It's yeah. like, and then does this uh, when you're charging it, uh, it'll do like a yellow, like pulsing thing when, I, if it's just in standby. I, I will say the, um, I, I will say the touchpad. I'm, I'm excited about, especially with the new the Steam controller. That's going to be something you know, kind of similar. Uh, the Thief guy was showing us how he could quickly select his, um, you know, like here's the touchpad. It's like he could select his inventory items. And it, he's like, you get the muscle memory, so you can kind of just click in where you want, so you can like quickly select, like you know, a fire arrow versus a water arrow or something. He says it doesn't. It takes a little while to get used to. Sorry, the flashlight was for dying light. Sorry about that. Uh, the zombie parkour game. So I, I feel like that everyone remembered when you had to throw zombies with six access in oh. Uncharted One. Yeah. Or grenades. Yeah, grenades. Sorry. Throw uh, zombies. <laughs> I'm like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> Whoa, that'd be a fun. One. I feel like we're gonna see a lot of this kind of gimmicky stuff for a while, and it's not like overly insulting, but you know. 
I, I think it's going to be something that probably will fade out over time. Yeah, and we talk about uh, how Assassin's Creed uses it for the, the map, so it can be a little bit more... So it's like a little quickly. mouse pad, kind yeah. of, right? Yeah. I, I actually do like the trackpad quite a bit. Um, did Knack use any of that stuff? Um, the only really I notable so. thing I remember from Knack is when you collect sunstones, you the sound, like the little tingly sound that you get when you collect them, comes through the speaker of the yeah. controller. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's actually something that you don't notice right away. And then eventually you hear it like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of clever, but you know. Yeah, Killzone would uh, <laughs> blast like directionally right at you the audio diaries, and again, it felt kind of gimmicky, but it felt like extra distracting when you're in combat and someone's like, "We gotta clean up this mess again," and you're like getting shot at. I don't know, their audio diaries. Uh, <laughs> oh, like I do it? like I do like being able to plug a uh, headphone like right into the controller. Like getting audio out that way. Also helped nice. us out with some uh, audio capture, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, nice. I mean, again, Secret that's that's powers. more like in-house stuff, but like it looks like the the HDMI handshakes will notice if your television has a Dolby decoder, and that can be interesting. Or something. We haven't captures. exactly figured out what the yeah. issue is, but it's with some of our equipment and certain TVs. It's so, weird, uh, complex. During a, I got a little hardware demo. Um, some of this stuff I think has come out, and some of it's I just think a little under the radar. But I did come up with like nine or ten things that I thought were interesting. Um, you guys saw that you can also with the camera you can do a face login, which the Xbox yeah. one they've been talking about. But you actually have to hold the uh, you have to hold the dual axis and kind of use it as kind of like your face is one part of the key and the dual axis little dual LED shock. is the other part. Dual shock, sorry, is the uh, the other part. Dual axis. I don't know what I'm talking about. Throw zombies with your dual axis. Um, <laughs> With friends, you can request true names, which is weird because yeah. like, everyone's seen like Google recently with like YouTube I didn't and everything turn that is on. trying to turn like everything into this weird like real name apocalypse. I'm not. I have kind of mixed feelings about all that stuff, but it is like something you have to opt into. It's per person. Yeah, so you can see true names and display show other displayed and stuff like that. I at least have a still have a funny dog face for my icon though. <laughs> uh, voice chat's going to be eight people uh, with Vita cross game. I think you know that's good, but I mean I hate talking during games, but I think people are going to enjoy that. I'm curious about how much that Vita functionality is going to get yeah. used. Oh, the PlayStation camera, when you have it hooked in, it automatically starts pulling, uh, the, uses the mic for voice chat, so I just like, unplug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trophies, I think we all saw this. Uh, they now mark how rare they are, and they're back cataloging it. We logged in with an old PSN account, so we saw that all these old trophies are kind of, you know, a lot of websites, I can't, like, Rap Raptor, is that the site everyone always is uh, using? I've heard of it, yeah. Or something, where it's like, it ranks your achievements mm -hmm. and how many people have got them. So you could automatically assume a gold trophy is rare, but this is actually getting into how many people have gotten it and ranking it as like rare and ultra rare. Will it sort the rarities based on how many people have it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, so it's like huh. uh, it's like Steam's always done this. It yeah, has yeah, a yeah. percentage of how many people. So I think it's just another level of fetishism to throw onto the whole trophy achievement war. Um, uh, and did you see the activity feed thing, thing yet? With the friends, yeah. With the 2,000 friends, I'm kind of curious. And they did say ads will pop up in there, but they said they're going to try to limit it I mean, this is PR speak, but they're like they're going to try to limit it to like store sales and like new game announcements. Um, but in all honesty, the demos that we saw, it was all just friend feeds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I've only been seeing my really own unique. activity feeds so far, yeah. but it's you know, I've seen the, all the videos I posted in trophies and stuff like that. Um, you can charge your uh, USB. You can charge your controllers when the system's off, yeah. which is nice. I, I think yeah. that's pretty good. Um, Oh, and this is kind of like the Xbox. You can double click on the, the PlayStation button, and then it's kind of like alt tabbing on Windows, and it will let you, let you jump from you know, process to process with the weird suspend, suspend states and stuff. I don't really think like, we've messed around with this to really know it's the full boundaries. Because it's not like the save states, like Pete, they were saying quite yet, but it is kind of like a suspended state and kind of like a restore. Yeah. Uh, for well, like I mean, two things. When you're doing the uploads, you kind of use that a bit. Um, you, I think you were the one doing it. You can type with the gyro. Oh, yeah, you can type with the success. Yeah. I, yeah, you can click a button. You can and like, like select on the keypad. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, oh, I, this was again for the uploading. When you upload things, you can even make more customized Facebook groups if you want to share things even with people that are a subset of your friends list. Oh, so, okay. I mean, I don't know if that would be the most useful thing, but I thought it was actually pretty interesting. Um, and I thought I had one more big note. Oh, uh, for more updates, two to four a.m. and you can't change that. So if you're a late night gamer. For the auto, the auto updates for firmware, and it, it probably like, will only do it if you're not the, playing, though. Right, yeah, but there's you can't like I don't know if you did have off hours, you can't change. Oh, it. Oh, one thing I noticed, uh, it does not like you just unplugging the cord. Uh, so basically, if you want to unplug the system, like you have to go to the power settings and actually like there's like there's a standby setting and then there's a completely power off, 
and they want you to do that complete power off before unplugging it because of course if it's going to be downloading things in the background you could screw up your hard drive a little bit uh, but I think if you just push the power button on the system, it doesn't fully power down. It does the standby. Also, Resogun's pretty fun. Yes. <laughs> we were probably going to do a Resogun. Mo most consistently uh, enjoyed game across everybody, it seems. I am curious if it is going to be played past the, like, the initial feeding frenzy. But, you know, Geometry Wars was like everyone's favorite Xbox 360 game for right. like, quite a long, long time back in the day. I mean, I, some people... No one at G for the record, no one at GT who's at GT now was here when we reviewed Perfect Dark Zero. Oh yes, that's true. <laughs> Just gotta gotta throw that Except one. Except Brandon, but he didn't really have any responsibility. That's true. No, that. that is true. Brandon was here. I feel like I'm the only person in the entire office that hasn't played Resogun yet, and it's kind of bumming me out because it, it looks really cool. It's, so I will defeat free. you in the uh, the tournament, hopefully then. Um, yeah, I think the high score thing could definitely have people. Playing it for more and more, especially the multipliers increasing with the difficulty. I think it's more just like you can you can always get better at it, you know, regardless of you know how you're scoring, you know, getting getting to a new level on a higher difficulty, you know, it's fun. Yeah, yeah you can definitely go back and play. Well, it. I also like I got you know kind of stuck in that zone with like the same ship, and then like come into the office and see you play with a different ship, and I'm like, whoa, that's. You know, like it, it, it doesn't seem like it should be that different, but it, it, it does feel different to me. Yeah, I wish the ships were a little, they had a little more range of ships, yeah. but, you know, you can, the homing missiles are super handy for the higher difficulties where the, the bullets are coming out of the exploded enemies. Um, I got to, see, out of the way. got to see one of your favorite series, Infamous. Oh, yeah, I yeah. showed the new Neon ability. Um, it was a very catered demo, like you couldn't die and you had like infinite powers, but you start with smoke and then you go up to a neon sign and you'd like suck <laughs> the neon juice out. But it's still kind of a, what did you always say, Justin? Like a huh? um, monkey throw and feces? That kind of thing, still, uh, still, still kind of there. Um, I mean, it kind of, like, I didn't play Infamous 2, but it felt, it still kind of felt like Infamous. Obviously, they're taking a lot of the Seattle-ness and really putting that in. They really wanted to highlight, like, they're licensing all this weird, like, car washes and stuff. <laughs> um, they won't say how many powers there are going to be and stuff. But I think that the idea of, like, and, you know, they were saying, like, you know, when you make something... When you, you know how you used to like suck the electricity out of things? Yeah. Like when you have the smoke power, if you blow something up and it makes smoke, you can like kind of self-power oh, nice. yourself. Which I, I thought was like an interesting idea, but I'd want to see it more in, in practice because like, I don't know, what I saw was so, so tailored, I'm not entirely sure. It seems like they're playing with some cool ideas, but not going maybe too far from the, the formula. Except I mean staying away from electricity. Um, how smoky does though. the smoke look? There's like Super various smoky. degrees. I mean, the thing I think we're going to see a lot just from watching some of the stuff we've seen. I think we're going to see a lot of more dust particles. You know, oh, with like that's, with the God Ray. I, I think through. I may actually end up complaining about the particles and Need for Speed. There's so much crap flying around all the time. Yeah, I think that's going to kind of be like you know, remember when everything was bloom for a while? I think <laughs> it's going to be like now it's going to be like dust in the light is going to be kind of like the new thing. Um, let's talk about graphics for like just two seconds. Mm -hmm. It is marginal, though, and I, I know we kind of joked about flower earlier, but you know, you, you guys saw—I mean, you saw the kill zone, the kill zone. You saw kill zone shadow fall. It looks good, but it doesn't really. It's still not that generational leap. It's a lot more subtle. Um, knack. I yeah. I mean, there were some knack really cool knack. things uh, in knack that looked really good, like when you die and you crumble into a bunch of little bits, or when you dodge and kind of your pieces trail after you. I think those effects are really neat, but just. The way the environments look, uh, they're, they're really plain, and just some of the characters um, have really poor animation. Like, their their mouths don't really match up with what they're saying, and it's just it's yeah. like, ah, this doesn't feel very next-gen. And obviously there's been games like, uh, you know, Call of Duty Ghost and Battlefield. Um, I don't think we've... I, I saw some of the sports games running. EA had a little thing where they had uh, FIFA... The yeah, NBA is supposed to look really amazing. I haven't got to see it myself yet. Yeah, the the 2K one. Like I have not seen the or the EA one because I haven't seen oh, no, boom uh, from the EA 2K. one. Yeah, the, the supposedly the NBA 2K 14. Are they? Yeah. Did they add a year? Yeah, they add a year. Yeah, we're on 14. Yeah, yeah. They uh, supposedly like it was a su substantial you know step up. What Craig was saying is that it's actually a different engine. Even they didn't just port it's it like over. It's like a 0.5 on increase. Uh, I talked to the guys who made Lego uh, nice. Marvel, and they're like. Yeah, we had our engineers upport it. You know, things are quicker. There's less load times, but you know, we didn't do much. We oh, they said all the cutscene models that they use from the the in-game cutscene models that would have been too chunky to run on the current gen stuff. Uh, they used the, those higher res models, so that's kind of interesting. But they're like, you know, we didn't really add much, or like, you know, there's no actual new content or anything like that. So I thought it was kind of an, an interesting and a little more honest view of like how some of this stuff's 
happening. And like I said, Battlefield and um, Call of Duty. Call of Duty, you know, they're kind of like on par with what we've seen on the high res PC. Mm -hmm. Like you, you did the Ghosts. You played a bunch of different versions, right? Yeah. Did you see it? End up seeing Ghosts on PS4? I did. I actually played Ghosts the most on PS4. Ghosts the most. The most. <laughs> and there was kind of a parody between like that and uh, like the PC, right? I have I have not touched the PC version. It wasn't at the review event at all. Oh, okay. I just haven't had time to go back and check it out. Let's so. see if it's on the Steam account. Um, yeah. So graphics still kind of a. At this point, a step, a small step. Yeah, it's a step forward. I think it's just one of those things where, yeah, it, the the differences are there, but you, not always the easiest thing to notice. Because I, I think it's one of those things where like, we already got such great graphics in the last yeah. gen that, you know, anything now is kind of like cleanup work. You know, I think part part of it also is uh, they they don't have to cheat things where before you might have to pull a trick to make it appear that right. you know this was really this is really smoke or these are really particles or this effect is really you know, happening, man. And, you know, Resogun, they're like, look at all these individual pieces, and they really are there. And it's it's cool, and it's impressive, right? Speak, speaking but, of, uh, sorry. Voxels. To interrupt. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, speaking of cheating, uh, something that really kind of drove me crazy in Knack is there are a bunch of scenes where it will take control away from you, and it'll go into a cutscene, and then Knack will just, like, jump from a ledge down and climb something. Yeah, and yeah. then they, like climb something, and then it. And these these sequences last ten seconds. You know, they're not any longer than that. And it's like, really, like it, there couldn't have been a way where I could have just kept playing. So that that was one of the, the things that really drove me crazy. It's like we have all this power, and you can't just make the level seamless. You know. Um, yeah. Well, that, I mean, uh, just one last little visual thing about Killzone. Like well, early on in the game, you run into a mirror, and there's no reflection of your character. Mm. And then way later on, which we weren't allowed to show. Uh, you could say it's from Call of Duty Black Ops 2, or you could say it's from The Fifth Element, but you control a little robot cockroach that Perfect scurries dark, around. Maybe. Oh, Perfect right. dark also <laughs> works. Uh, but if you turn around, you cannot see your character model. Like, everything else is there. So it was, it was a yeah. little little weird, and then like, maybe he's cloaking when he does that. Like, I don't but remember yeah, so, but any see, both of these instances, like, like, these aren't really technical problems. They're just like, you know, they just didn't think or design around that. Well, reflections have always been, like, a, a big deal, yeah. like, you know, beyond, like, specular No, I mean, stuff. you could, like, see your little pixelated reflection in Metroid Prime if you jumped in so right In that certain one objects. spot. Yeah. Duke Nukem 3D <laughs> has pretty good bathroom what? mirror. Duke Nukem Yeah, 3D. no, I mean, that trick was that they yeah, were mirroring your character, you know, literally that space behind there. That's why I was so freaked out when I played... Uh, Mario 64? The no, The Last of Us. Oh. And in that opening Austin scene, like, I'm like, oh, I bet you that place is totally built out to be the length of her room, but it wasn't. So they, that, that early mirror was actually pretty interesting. But that's a pretty nerdy talk. Um, oh, I got to see uh, a video of Metal Gear Ground Zeroes and uh, ask Kojima some questions that he wasn't allowed to answer. Uh, so that was fun. He did say there's going to be like way less cutscenes in Ground Zeroes, but they wouldn't talk about the exclusive content for PlayStation brands. Or, uh, for Ground Zeroes or for Phantom Pain? Or for, for Ground both? Zeroes. Okay. And uh, if like the question I was wondering, since this is kind of a prequel is it a prequel I, is there going to be any actual connection like save data or anything and they pr jumped on that and would not let him answer anything which means there's probably something really cool yeah i'm i'm hoping that like if you like there's a payoff in phantom pain which is like what it's like 7 years later or something like that like i it would yeah, be I great if like how you number. played actually affected and that the whole i would kind of go with their whole open world idea and how things are trying to like cascade out and like you know things will affect like how you do stuff that'd be really cool if phantom pain reflected how you played ground zeroes I don't know. I mean, it's different than uh, the Tanker demo disc, because that was a demo, right? <laughs> they weren't asking $30 for that. They were asking to buy Zone of the Enders. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so maybe yeah. it's not the, not so different. Oh. But uh, this is interesting. Um, said I saw Thief. Um, you said like the writing's, good, right? the writing's pretty... Not, the writing really kind of... Dorky? Yeah. It's like, I'm a thief. I'm going to hide in the shadows. I mean, I'm exaggerating. Clever thief, right? But, uh, you know, after playing Dishonored, it, it felt... It felt a lot like Dishonored, but a little more, a little more paced. Like uh, they showed a little aggression stuff, but a lot of like you know, like guards were like, "That bird always squawks and wakes up the neighbors." It's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't walk by them. It just, uh, it was the first, it was literally the first level, so maybe it's just being a little heavy-handed. Mm. But it looked cool. I like first-person stealth games, and God, there hasn't been a thief since what, like, oh, four. It's been a while. It's been like ten years. So. Yeah, I hope it comes together. Um, super excited for Child of Light, which is oh. the. Uh, yes. Did you end up watching the walkthrough? I did. 
So okay. Child of Light is kind of like a 2D explorey game with a turn-based RPG element out of like a 16-bit series with some real-time elements. A lot of people have been comparing it to Grandia. It's the Grand, Grandia 2. It has yeah. the Grandia 2, or if you played the second the Penny Arcade. Thing. Yeah, you punish yeah. people, but you also have a little on-screen sprite. So your character's there ready to like input, you know, attack command or cast a spell. But you have a little sprite, and you have light ability. And you what can, kind of, you mean a sprite, like a fairy like a ghost, sprite? Like a ghost, okay. yeah, or like, yeah, like a fairy sprite. And when you see the little... Uh, the, like the racing combat line, when the enemy gets to the red, you can try to like stunt them, and then you can hit them and send them back as well. So they were saying, perceivably, you could be really low level and get through the game if you played really skillfully, like you know, from a reflex standpoint as, a, as opposed from like a tactician standpoint. Where you did you actually play it? Um, it was really buggy when we were playing it, so I had total control of the. I was the main character. Mm -hmm. And then anytime we got into the combat, the second player, who was only supposed to control the sprite, was controlling everything. So they they had some bugs, mm -hmm. but they're using um, the Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends uh, yeah, engine. Art. So it's it's really pretty. And the the lead guy on it is the guy who wrote Far Cry Three. So is it the writer or the? Yeah, yeah. So the, wow. he was like Lee's boss. Uh, is the writer the the director as well? For Far Cry Three. That's a good question. I'd have to double check on that. But it's I his, heard it was a director. But it's you his, it's to the his guy. game, and uh, the whole game's in in rhyme. Like it's like a very like writerly experience, like all these weird rhymes and even like the item descriptions. And he said they're gonna like even when you go to the options menu and you want to choose like <laughs> stereo or mo I don't know, like all of that stuff's gonna be in rhyme, which is a little dorky, but that's the kind of dorkiness I can I, I can appreciate. Does the game have rabbit holes? I have not seen rabbit holes. Well, I, you go deep within the rabbit holes. Yeah, we jumped into a well. Ah, uh, nice. Well, so, I really similar. like. First of all, you're playing as like this little girl, right? Which is unconventional by itself, but like she goes and she pulls out the sword and when she attacks you know she's not like this great warrior so when she tries to swing it takes her like a lot of effort it's, like it's it she uses both hands and it, it it takes all of her strength and momentum to to hit somebody and it was just really charming and adorable from the, the it's little a sword in the stone too right so it's kind of like the little lanky arthur and he's like Ooh. yeah <laughs> yeah so it's just hand it to k dude just give it to k I can't remember the the last JRPG where <laughs> I'm kidding. you played Arthur as like cool. a, a little weak guy, you know, and it's just nice as opposed to always the same. Like, I'm a fighter, I'm buff, or you know, whatever. And it is. the game actually seemed hard. Like, the, I walked in at the end of the previous group's demo, and they were getting wrecked. They tried to fight the same normal enemy. I'm like, curious, three like, times. how does how, is the targeting just like regular menu? You yeah. know, you're, you're highlighting yeah. the guy who you want to attack. Who do you want to and, attack? Hmm. Yeah. Um, but you know, like there's a spider, and the spider, as soon as the spider gets to the red, if you don't freeze them, they'll they'll jump to the end. So you have to actually kind of stagnate mm. them a little earlier, like right when they hit red. So there's weird kind of like meta, I guess. Like so they get to the red, things. and then they'll attack within a certain time. Or yeah, or like I, the... I think in the red is when you have the ability to pause them. I'm not sure if you can actually pause them before they get to the red, but it's like a little strip. So but anyway, there, there's something cool to though. the battle system, right? There's yeah, like... yeah, and I think I feel like I don't know. Like I had a little bit of fun with uh, thirteen two. But you were telling me that even if you're super under leveled, you can fight anything. That's what they were saying. Um, like you can get through the game like really underpowered as long right, as you're as playing well. Skilled enough. Huh. Yeah. Which reminds me of you. You told me that old web-based game you used to play, where like you were the dragoon oh. or something like that, and you were like the guy was like, yeah, the levels, Final Fantasy uh, like, Flash battle game. And you were like oh, under leveled, but you destroyed that guy. Yeah, no, I wrecked that guy. Well. He got so mad. <laughs> All his guys had life rings. Everyone revived. I killed his whole team twice with Defender. Defender's a good ability. <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy games used to have a really, you know, interesting, deep, but still turn-based battle system. So I would like another one of those. Yeah. Um, I, I finally played Ho Hokum. I still oh, not yeah. sure if I completely understand it, but uh, it was actually Seth Killian who was doing the demo. I think at some point I managed to understand it and then I forgot it's again. A, it's a toy. It's a toy where you interact with things and things come to life. It, honestly, like, and I, this, I don't mean this in disrespectful, but it reminds me of the, like, the CD-ROM games that were around in like 93 and 94 that were like hot spots of animation and multimedia. But this has a little more control. How does it compare to like a Nobi Nobi Boy? Um, Nobi Nobi Boy is a really good comparison at first because people jump on your back, but the game's not really randomized. It, it actually is kind of like kind of cause and effect uh, mm. stuff. I was in the, the guano factory and we were mining shit to <laughs> literally, and we were filling this big vat of shit to make the CEO happy. And then I got shit colored. And then when I left, Seth's like, I got to do this. And he like started up a washing machine. He's like, I don't want to be shit colored when they do the next <laughs> demo. Because you fly around and you make a little <laughs> rainbow, your little rainbow snake. Um, Definitely not going to be a game for everyone, but anyone who liked, I don't know, like Lost in uh, Linger in Shadows or something, like something that's not quite, uh, you're not quite sure what the game is, but there's still some gaminess to it. It's, it's something that really appeals what to me. What about that anyway. game with Cloud Whales? 
that came anything out. like that? No, I thought I feel like the Cloud Whales game was actually way more gamey, directed. That actually felt like a like a Spectrum game, like an overly designed thing with like that isometric view and whatnot. Um, oh, and I, I did so I did say Dying Light. It's so weird. I know uh, Chris is filming right now. He got to play it a little bit. It's so hard to say if it's different enough from Dead Island. Like there is no right. like scaling and stuff. So you and don't it's see not stats. As loot. You don't see numbers. No, there's not as much loot. But you're there. still when you're surrounded by zombies, it still kind of feels a lot like that with the melee and like you're kicking and stuff like that. It's all shoulder button focused though. Like, it was really hard. R one was jump, and that mm. it's really hard to get your head wrapped around that like consistently. But you're almost never using the face buttons unless it's like really solitary actions like searching or at, like contact sensitive. With the exception of slide, slide is a uh, circle. But it's all like all your attacks and throws and melee stuff is you all know, on the shoulder button. The random they, thing to that well, right reminds me of. It's like a Halo certain con Halo control config. There's a jump on the shoulder. But it's weird because it is first person melee. Which is a very underdeveloped genre in the, in the first place. So yeah. it has to give you that kind of beat em up idea, but it is kind of kind of go closer to the shooting stuff. But How do they handle weird. Um, health regeneration? Because I know in Dead Island, you're, you're eating. Um, there was there were health packs and stuff. Like I saved a guy and he gave me a health pack. Okay. Uh. I don't know if there was general regeneration. It was a pretty quick demo. I and you fight regular humans like. Whatever. I've, I've never liked in any game where it's like you recover a little bit of health at a time with like things like candy bars or energy drinks. It's just like sitting there and you're like trying to get back as much health as possible. It's just. Have you played Breakdown? No. Because you take like one bite and then you just throw it away. That's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all I need. You've eaten the whole thing. Um, but no, what that reminds me of with the shoulder buttons, I actually. I just, I just played Cameo for the first time really this past weekend. I like, played through half of the game. And that was the same way. It's like you swapped characters with the face buttons, but then you did all your actions with the shoulders. I I have to know what compelled you to play cameo. Okay, well I bought it for a feature that mm -hmm. I did last month, um, and so it was already it was just kind of sitting around. And it was like, I kind of want to check this out because I've always been curious about it. And, and for one, and then number two, I just I kind of want to see like, okay, well how far has the generation come? And it's funny because like there's stuff in cameo. That like they're touting in Assassin's Creed 4 as a next gen feature, you know, like grass moving away from you when you walk through it oh, and stuff wow. like that. You know, so AI it's, fish. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, rare, rare. Gonna... Back when rare was rare, kind of <laughs> still, still rare for the most part. Yeah, I mean that game was probably yeah, the that game was probably uh, like in pre production in like ninety nine. Yeah, Cameo or was going to be a. In yeah. I game, played right? it on the. I played GameCube, a, I think. I played the Xbox version. X, not three sixty. I played the Xbox oh, version yeah. of Cameo. We had it back at G four. I mean. Some of the same ideas, but it was it was all like arcadey. It didn't have any of the like story stuff. Um, actually, really quick with Assassin's Creed, visually about the same. Yeah, I mean, we talk about it for like eight minutes. It's already up, but uh, mm -hmm. but like generally still. Right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't wow you at first. You kind of have to look for the little details, and yeah. then you spend. I spent so much time looking for the little details that I started seeing things that were actually in the current gen version. I just hadn't noticed them yet. Oh. <laughs> And finally, after like three and a half years, I finally got to play The Witness for like ten seconds. Nice. So, but I forgot to see if the trackpad was going to do the uh, the panel stuff. Yeah. But he zoomed me around. He showed me the tree puzzle, and uh, I asked him about how. Because did you guys play Braid? Yeah. Like yeah. the la you know how the last puzzle was like very different, like structurally from the rest of the mm -hmm. game. Even though the game always was like an additive process, and this. But if you've seen anything on The Witness, you know it's always just layering on 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 top of itself. And I'm like, well, how are you going to try to handle the end? Is it going to be something familiar and different? And he's like, basically, he's like not going into it specifically, but yeah, he's got something like, even though the game's like an open world puzzle game, which is kind of funny, he's like, there is something really interesting planned for like the end game puzzle that makes it very separate from everything else you've been doing to that point. It will involve headshots. It could be, man. <laughs> could be. I, anything. I wouldn't put anything, put anything past uh, Mr. Blow. Um, in general, though, I mean, I think we're probably going to do a little more. Uh, you know, fire up that old console war, and uh, after the Xbox stuff, maybe do a little more head to head. But I think I've been pretty happy with the PlayStation 4. Um, decent third party support. I like Killzone. I, I know some people didn't. Yeah. Uh, I really like that multiplayer. Um, it really, really appeals to me. It's going to continue to appeal to me, and it's going to affect how I review the game. Um, do you do you think it's better than Killzone 3 multiplayer? Which I really think it's like? kind of on par. I I don't miss the mech suits, but I did think the the jetpacks and. Uh, the operations mode, which added more kind of a narrative feel, but they've added more to Warzone, so there's even more variations, right. and yeah. you can stay in the game. For they so said much they took longer. the narrative stuff out just because they wanted to put so much focus on player customizing maps. So. Oh, and I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, you know, I always thought the idea of the Forge in Halo seemed cool, and I did like that one where everyone was on mongooses and the two player teams, but I never played that many 
you know, custom games. They made us do some custom games. They made us do like kind of a poor choice. They made us do team snipers, mm. and everyone was lo- everyone was cloaked and sniping. So it was like in one life. So wow. you either sat around and maybe you got one or two kills, but then you die and you just sat there. And it, you know, it wasn't particularly the best, but it did show the kind of the the strength of what you could customize. Um, but I just liked how like how ninety percent of the stuff's unlocked, and then like the extra unlockable stuff's pretty small tomatoes. I mean. Potatoes. I don't think I salt <laughs> Man, yeah, that's wrong. You're gonna everything off today. I'm an alien. Uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, we're not oh, getting as much sleep, sleep for yeah. the, the next gen. Is I need blood affecting our lives. Not you. Like actual <laughs> tomato blood, blood. Oh, tomato man. juice, <laughs> banicula. <laughs> Look up banicula. Um, but uh, I, I really like how in game you can even customize your class while you're in the middle of the match. Even though you can have like five for each of the archetypes, you could go in there and still be like, oh, I want to try this gun and grab this ability. Mm. Um, and I think once people get used to stuff, like you know, resing people and setting up, uh, like I was setting up uh, spawn, spawn points. points, you know, and like I think a lot of people were ignoring that because they just wanted to like kill people. But like I kept putting a spawn point nearing like a place we had to defend or attack. I can't remember, and it was like, wow, this is incredibly helpful. <laughs> so pretty cool. Uh, I really can't wait until I, I can actually play more. I, I guess uh, the, the yeah the everything went live yesterday. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, hopefully find matches. Yeah, I mean I've been playing people in Need for Speed, so I mean there's people out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, generally though, any any final thoughts on the PlayStation 4 uh, launch, the hardware, the software lineup? I mean, could have been better. I feel like launches always seem a little underwhelming unless it has like, unless you're like Nintendo and you have like a Mario 64. Like one game can just completely block out the sun it's it's strange because i feel like it depends on this perspective you're coming from like for me i held off playing like assassin's creed 4 and battlefield 4 for specifically the playstation 4 so i know yeah exactly um (laughs) i know going in i'm probably going to enjoy those games especially like battlefield multiplayer so i'm excited for that but you know if you've already played those games and you're still getting a playstation 4 i think it's significantly less exciting for you which i think is interesting so. Yeah, I mean, that's the weird thing about console launches, right? Like, people kind of write off all these great third-party games right. as if they don't matter. And it's like, no, you just got a new system, and you can you can play this game on it. It works. I think people are really forgetting about the downloadable stuff, too. You know, if you have PlayStation Plus, you have two games right away. Um, you uh, don't Warframe even need is, is uh, free, free to play, free play as, well. as well. Yeah, yeah. So, but, I mean, you have Resogun and Contrast. And yeah, Mike really liked Contrast. I think he liked it the most out of anyone in the world. Like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't played it. That's also, yeah, also going to be on PC, right? Yeah, I think it's an, it, it's an yeah. interesting game, at the least. It's like, nice to have something like that. It looks interesting yeah. enough where because I can get it for free, you know, I'm gonna download yeah, it. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. So, yeah. And any any final thoughts, Blood? Um, I don't or know. I just, add, sorry. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm enjoying it and uh, keep keep playing it for the next few days at least. Need so. for Speed's pretty good though. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't gotten to the point where I can like really cement my ideas, but uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm enjoying it. I'm not sure that I'm enjoying it as much as. Hot Pursuit or Most Wanted yet, but we'll see as you know more people get in there and, and they're playing. And Justin, begrudgingly, I'm not Rezo gonna, Gun, Rezo I'm not gonna okay. buy one yet. But yeah, Rezo Guns, Rezo Guns, pretty good. If you had bought it, even if you don't have you know the one game you really want to play, you, know, you can just play Rezo Gun every once in a while. Look at stuff blow up. Look at all those voxels. It'll... Well, it's kind of the, the the inverse of like you were saying. There's all these great third party games that are mm-hmm. on other systems, and right. now here's Rezo Gun, which is it's a little game. It could have been done. Like, it fills, like, it fills its role. Perspective, it fills it its role totally really done. well. But yeah. it's like, hey, I can only play this on my PlayStation 4. That's pretty cool. Might yeah. as well play it on my PlayStation 4. Yeah. yeah. Um, real quick. Good beta, though, too. Hmm? You know, with uh, supposedly there's going to be some some new announcements tonight. Now that we're kind of in the process of launch, is there anything that you would? <laughs> <laughs> is there any? Are there any games that you would you know secretly want to be announced? I there were Demon Souls too. That's that's a and rumor. That's a, that's a rumor. That's also a rumor. A Canadian Last uh, Guardian. Canadian. But who would develop it? Canadian Parappa. Canadian. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, by the time I mean this will be old news by the time this goes up. But oh, yeah, the games are already announced. Where our where our guess is correct. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, Psyops 2, they've been promising it for Last, a long time. They can time. finally talk about Last Guardian. The, the agent. Say, guys, the Last agent. Guardian uh. is not canceled. For <laughs> real. J- Justin, would you be excited about Demon's Souls 2? Like, I don't know. Who would develop it? Sony owns the rights, but I mean, From's a free agent. I don't I, know. I, mean, I don't know if I would trust anyone besides From to do a Souls game, but maybe that's but just... But could, it could be. It could be, you know, because Dead Rising went back to single platform, right? So Demon's Souls on PS4 and then... 
Dark Souls 3 sometime in the distant future. <laughs> that would be strange. It'd be interesting. Uh, yeah. I have no, yeah. No, um, no real predictions. And in, in very brief uh, non-PlayStation 4 news, Desktop Dungeons finally came out. This was in Office Obsession three years ago, so you guys should check it out. It's a little... Some people may think it's pricey, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. Um, there's they a free version that you can still check out. Ben checked it out last You introduced night. it to me. I, it's, it's so cool. Awesome, right? yeah, yeah, it's really neat. Um, and uh, I guess that Zelda game is pretty, pretty good, Oh, Mike said. Heck we yeah. should just do like a full-on like Zelda everything, like <laughs> depths. <laughs> Like, I feel seriously, like, like all-encompassing. I know they did the Zelda Timeline yeah. devs once, no, ben, but we Ben has do... been uh, molding his life to, to prepare for that. He's yeah. playing every Zelda he can. It, it's Show not just me. Thumbs. Like, every time I go back to my desk, people are talking about Zelda. Like, I think a lot of people in the office have things to say. So. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it looks interesting. I can't wait to check it out. Um, and we, got it, we got it on cart, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a code. Yeah. Nintendo's been annoying. Um, can yeah, you next that? week, Xbox... Mario, and then uh, maybe at one point we'll sleep. Um, but stay tuned. Tons of Xbox stuff all next week with another special Invisible Walls and another live stream hosted by Daniel Kaiser. And I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, thank you guys for watching. Cool.